My name is Leslie Williams, and today's date is April 29, 2012, when I'm in San Diego, California. I'm being electronically harassed at this specific location. I have been from the very second I got here. And the only thing to do is triangulate the electronic harassment uh, by knowing the GPS tracking of where a target's at in, in a specific area. And... Uh, uh, I was camping out next door to the FBI from April 13th, 2011, all the way up until February, the morning of February 22nd, 2011. Uh, in reference to, um, well, I've been hiking in California ever since I got here. And uh, that's because I'm subject to two organized stalking tactics. It's a nationwide syndicate, and you can go to Google and type in, uh, hang on a second, um, digitally tape recording what I'm saying because they uh, erase my uh, video files uh, by using the technology that is described in the remote neural monitoring file and they also uh, drain the battery of my video devices even while I'm using them. This is a fully charged battery right now that I'm using on this video camera so if it shuts off it'll prove they're using remote neural monitoring at this location. My name is Leslie Williams and I'm in San Diego, California. I came out here on August 8, 2011, from Connecticut. I was in Michigan, went to, from Michigan to Connecticut, was gang stalked. Left Connecticut on August 4, 2011, and arrived one day late uh, as far as my scheduled arrival on Greyhound here to San Diego. I was supposed to arrive on August 7, but because of terminal layovers, delays, I didn't arrive until August 8, 2011. And uh, I was gang stalked from the second I got off the Greyhound bus. I was literally even gang stalked on the Greyhound bus from Connecticut to here. And I made an email file uh, and some digital files about what might happen to me on the Greyhound bus on my way out here because I was literally gang stalked here to San Diego uh, in 2006 on the Greyhound bus as well. And I'm going to tell you something what they did. They literally used one of the same, this is the honest to God truth. And I have a video file of her and I got to find it and upload it because I got like 30 memory cards. And my life has been so hectic since I've been here I just haven't uploaded them. And I didn't find a data reader writer which is what I used to upload my videos until December. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why no videos were uploaded until December because I couldn't figure out how to upload them. But I was still making videos just for, as a safeguard. Anyways... From August 13th up until February 21st, I actually didn't leave the hiking area by the FBI building until February 22nd because they gave me it uh, until the next day to leave. And um, But anyways, listen to this. From August 13th, 2011 up until February 21st, 2012, I was hiking 150 feet right next door to the FBI building where I was subjected to nonstop electronic harassment every single second that I was there. And even concerning my own evoked potentials, which means even remote neural monitoring was being used on me there as well. I caught their electronic harassment on multiple digital tape recorders over at that location. And there's proof online that they altered a video that I made at that location in the same exact way that they altered a video that I was making over at USD. A professor over at USD, who's a professor in communications who specializes in videos and images, witnessed the altered video that was made at USD and he posted it on first post that was posted in January I think he also uh, put the video the first video MTS sent me of me being brutally assaulted on first post web page that video don't show me being assaulted it just shows the alterations that I took a video picture of of the first video they sent me in reference to the environment and structure of the bus being altered he posted that on first post in December then he posted the video uh, that they altered of me catching some gang stalkers over at USD. They didn't want it to be uploaded to YouTube, so they altered the video to a still frame and then replaced all the electronic, uh, all the verbal statements that I made in that video with electronic uh, interference. They did the same thing to a video I made right next door to the FBI building, showing on that video the same electronic interference being used to black out all my verbal statements. That video is in the comments feature of the USD video. He posted those on first post as well. Now, on uh, Feb the morning of February 20th, I was electronically harassed every single day from August 13, 2011 up until February 21st, 2012. 
at that location every single second of the time that I was at that location. On February 20th, 2012, I made a, uh, a video file uh, at that location of me taking a video picture of my tent, of uh, some bushes where I had some stuff hidden. And in that video, I made a comment that I'm hearing through electronic harassment one, uh, that they're going to come and steal my property. I left from that location, and uh, I took a, it was on President's Day, and I took a bus, and I was going to go to the FBI on that day. And I actually got on the bus and went to go get off the bus, and um, I asked a couple bus passengers, I go, are the government offices open today? And they said no. And um, so I got off the bus anyways, and I was still going to go. And then after when I got off the bus, I said, well, there ain't no point in this because uh, the buses were running on a Saturday schedule as a result of it being President's Day. So uh, I didn't want to take the chance of getting off the I got off the bus, and then I thought to myself really fast, they're going to be closed, and then I'm going to have to wait an hour to wait for the next bus. So I got back on the bus and then got off at uh, and decided to go to the San Diego Police Department to uh, file a police report. you got to remember, I'm learning disabled, so sometimes I think in nonlinear order. So and this, all this was happening really fast because the San Diego Police Department is right up the street from the FBI building. So I got off the um, uh, the bus and uh, right across the street from the Eastern Division San Diego Police Department just to see if they were open, and they weren't. But when I got there, uh, there was a flyer taped to their door that said that if I wanted to fill out fill out a online police report in reference to anything, uh, that I could do so, and it gave me the instructions. So I took a video picture of that. Then I walked up across the street to stand at the bus stop to wait for a bus, and uh, I thought, well, since I just got off the bus, it's going to be a little while because they were operating on Saturday schedule since it was President's Day. So I went two businesses down to a place that had a sign on their door that said they were going to be closing at the end of March uh, and that they were liquidating everything. It was a place that you could go to buy uh, uh, computer uh, uh, paper, you know, like printing paper and stuff like that. It was It was one of those type of businesses. And I walked in there and I asked them if they could take, uh, if they could look up the phone number for the FBI for me. And while I was waiting for that, a couple business employees came out from the back and engaged in organized stalking, physical gestures, which meant, which meant they were called. Now, <clears throat> I've already made a, numerous videos about how they're using the business community, and through and through the stalking, they know where you're at. And so all they do is, if when you, when you go into a business, especially when you've never visited before, they get on the phone and notify the business about what's uh about where you're at and if you don't believe what i'm saying look at the entire video uh at youtube that you can uh look at uh that's titled listen to a stranger you got to look at the entire video because on the tail end of that video it clearly shows that businesses are called and uh as a result uh employees and management uh will do things for these types of expeditions so they looked up the fbi number and wrote it down for me and then I left from there and went back to the San Diego, uh, went back to the bus stop right across the street from the San Diego Police Department and took that bus to uh, Old Town because I was going to originally just go to USD. And then I changed my mind because I figured since it was President's Day, the library might be closed and then I'd have to walk all the way across campus just to f find out that they were closed. So I changed my mind and... Um, and got back on a bus and took that bus to Fashion Valley and then from there took the uh, Green Line trolley to SDSU. When I got to SDSU, I uploaded that video that I made that morning at the hiking area of me stating that I'm hearing through electronic harassment they're going to come and steal my property. That was uploaded finally to YouTube at around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Then I left from there, and then I filed uh, an online police report through the San Diego Police Department stating that um, uh, what was going on, that I was being a target of organized stalking, and I believe that some of the San Diego police officers were involved in it, and that they're threatening to come and steal my clothes, okay? Well, uh, I, I filled out that online police report, then I got off the internet, then I got off the internet, because you're only allowed two hours at SDSU if you're not a student. Then I went to the media center, and on my way from the computer to the media center, I made a statement in my digital tape recorder, let's see if I'm harassed in here. Within 40 minutes, I was threatened by uh, the person who runs the media center. Caught that on digital audio file, and it's been uploaded to YouTube as well. Left from SDSU, and then I went to Hazard Center. Uh, I took the Green Line trolley to Hazard Center and was walking through there. I was going to kill some times at Barnes & Nobles. I stopped and asked the security guard a question, and that was it. Then I went to go walk towards Barnes & Nobles and stopped to have a cigarette in front of Barnes & Nobles. The security guard came and harassed me and threatened me and told me that I was uh, 
uh, at that time banned from coming on that property and that uh, I was being uh, accused of trespassing as a result. So I had to call the San Diego police five times and wait two hours for them to arrive and they never did. Then I went from there to the bus stop and uh, 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 the San Diego police drove by me and I waved them down and I told them what happened. They gave me a, some bullshit story that the security's got a right to do that. So then I, I finally, I just, I just said, screw this. I taped that conversation as well. So I finally said, just screw this and walked back over to the bus stop. Took the bus to Walmart, went into Walmart, bought a few things, including a new digital tape recorder, because all my memory of my digital tape recorder ran out, because I had to wait two hours for the police to arrive at Barnes and Nobles, and they never did, and I wanted to keep the tape recorder running, uh, <clears throat> in case something uh, was uh, transpired. And within those two hours, you'd literally flat out hear me being taunted by the security staff, like you would not believe, and. Um, so when I went into Walmart, I bought a new digital tape recorder, and they took all the usual digital tape recorders I usually buy off the shelf at Walmart. Now, if you don't believe that, go to YouTube and type in Gang Stalking in San Diego and look at for Sylvia L. Morales' YouTube videos. She's another target in San Diego, and she's stating the same thing, that when she went to go to Walmart to buy an MP3 player that she had been contemplating about buying, when she got there to go buy it, they took it off the shelf. All you got to do is t uh, Google extensively uh, organized stalking and or gang stalking and Walmarts. And look at how many responses you'll get to that. And how targets are saying the same thing. That when they go to buy uh, specific things at retail stores, by the time they get there, they're taken off the shelf. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, I left Walmart and then walked to, started walking to my hiking area, which was on the hill right behind Walmart. Because the FBI building is right next door. And, um... On my way walking there, uh, before I made the right turn down the sewer drain that that you'll see if you ever go up in there, it's a cement silver drain, a uh, sewer drain. As I was walking, before I made the right to head towards the hiking area, I heard through electronic harassment. Do, does she really expect her stuff to still be there? I walked another about 50 feet to get there in the pitch dark. Got there and it was all gone. Every single last bit of it was gone. So I got out of a spare uh, tent that I had hidden in some bushes and slept in 40 degree weather with no sleeping bag and just a coat that I had and uh, I finally got to sleep about 12:30 that night and then I woke up the next morning and I made a video file and I made some statements in on my digital tape recorder this one here and I said okay I was mad as hell because they stole over five hundred dollars worth of stuff clothes uh, three tarps a brand new tent that I had just bought uh, so I could have more room and uh, because I was sleeping in tents that like the one I got right now, which is real small. So I bought a new tent, three tarps, clothes like you would not believe, at least forty dollars worth of batteries, four four expensive flashlights, clothes like you would not believe, even brand new clothes. I'd say at least the total came to four hundred dollars worth of stuff that just flat out came up and stole. So uh the next morning when I got up I made a statement in this digital tape recorder that I bought that the night before at Walmart. Uh, I bought a, uh, I, I made statements in the digital tape recorder and I made a video file. I go, I go, I, t I was stating what happened the night before and, um, and that, uh, uh, that I was going to spend the day, uh, filtering through stuff that I had hidden in the nearby location and that the next day I was going to go to the FBI building and, uh, report that I was a target of human trafficking and that the San Diego police were directly involved in it. And I said, as a result of them scrutinizing what I did on the 20th, me looking up the FAS phone number at a business, and by me stating and me uh, temporarily getting off a bus to go to the FBI, and as a result of them watching my every move, which is what happens to targets of organized stalking, I go, watch, I go, I go. if, I'm a, if anybody comes up here today and is trying to evict me, uh, it's going to be the San Diego police, and they're going to use a buffer between me and them so it doesn't look transparent that they're involved in this. I go, watch. I go, if, if they come up today to evict me, it's going to be because they don't want it to look like retaliation after I go to the FBI. Yeah. And within an hour and four, within an hour and 24 minutes, they came up and evicted me from my camping area, which I got a video picture of that, and it was recorded on this same exact digital audio file. Now, what's the likelihood of me making a video on the morning of the 20th stating that I'm hearing through electronic harassment? Oh, and when they came up on the 21st, uh, uh, to evict me, they brought the people that were responsible for stealing all my stuff. And I got that on digital tape recorder of them admitting they were the ones that were responsible for taking it while I was gone. 
and I got proof I was at SDSU because I, when I went down to the media center, I checked out the movie Soylent Green. Yeah, and then so I got a, a receipt as a result of checking it out. So I can prove that I was gone all day long, okay? And um, so, and and uh, if I was at the hiking area on the 20th when they came up to steal my stuff, they would have told me on that day and evicted me that day. So it proves that what I heard on the morning of the 20th through electronic harassment, they went and did, and then they came up on the 21st and took responsibility for it. While I was gone, they stole it on the 20th while I was gone after I heard on the morning of the 20th. On the morning of the 20th, I made a video that I heard through electronic harassment they were going to come and steal my stuff. I left, was gone the whole entire day, didn't come back, didn't appear back on uh, at the uh, hiking location until after 10 o'clock, and everything's gone. And then the next day, they come and take responsibility for stealing it while I was gone, and the video was uploaded when I left and went to SDSU. That proves that I was being electronically harassed. Plus, also, in the police report that I made on the 20th, at SDSU, after I uploaded the video, flat out shows me saying uh, in the police report that they were threatening to steal my belongings. I printed out that police report. Yeah. So what does this tell people? What does this tell people? It tells people that what I was hearing through electronic harassment are factual realities. Because what's the likelihood of all that happening? There's now a petition online concerning me being tortured 150 feet from the San Diego uh, FBI building. Numerous video pictures that I've had already had online that I kept private because I didn't want uh, onlookers who were uh, watching my YouTube videos knowing where I was living. Numerous videos that I had in private that I've now made public show that I was camping next door to the FBI building. So I want you to carefully scrutinize everything I'm saying in this video right here and come to understand the factual realities of what I'm putting up with. Yesterday when I was at SCSU, a security guard had the literal audacity to come up and literally engage in a gang stalking physical gesture right in front of my video camera. Yeah, these people had the literal audacity because they know that they're going to be covered legally if I ever file a complaint or a lawsuit because they're connected within the system. This is organized crime within the system and do you really honestly believe for one second that they're ever going to allow the very system they're infested in, judges, lawyers, probate lawyers, uh, district attorney's office, prosecutor's office, police uh, department. Do you honestly believe that these people who are, who are infested in the very system that protects them are ever going to allow me to win a lawsuit of how I'm being tortured and harassed uh, through electronic means, remote neural manipulation, and organized stalking along all of my routes? Okay, do you really honestly believe for one second that they're going to allow the system to uh, prosecute the people that have been involved? Do you have any idea what this is going to do to SDSU's, SDSU's images, image or USD's image? They're not going to allow the images of these uh, uh, universities be tarnished by torturing a learning disabled woman about tor uh, concerning torturing a learning disabled woman which is being done to break me down for eventual human trafficking. I know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, I'm not feeling too good this morning. So the only thing I can suggest for you to do is go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman uh, catches gang soccer admitting they were put on the bus to harass her. Look at that video, which is the same exact bus ride I was assaulted on. Go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman brutally assaulted on MTS bus. That assault was predicted nine days before it happened in an email file, printed out, copied, scanned, and attached in a PDF link, which is in the comments feature of that video. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, look at all the videos that you'll see in the sidebar once you type that video in. You'll see, you see, you'll see all my videos, and you'll understand what's happening to me in San Diego, California. Today's date is April 29, 2012, and I'm being electronically harassed at this location, and they're threatening to steal my stuff, and I'm being harassed by homeless people they're using now, because they're harder to trace after the fact, which means they're harder to trace after they stage an incident or an assault towards me. I call 911. And, they're, and they don't arrive until the perpetrators are be t either took off or they use the homeless people to gang up on me and accuse me of shit. The San Diego police are directly involved in this crime, which means they will file false police reports. They will use anybody in the community they can that are hard to trace after the fact in case this blows up in their face later down the road. They're using anybody and everybody they can in the community, okay? to harass me, threaten me, intimidate me, and assault me along my routes. And they're not doing it over at SDSU as far as, as, far as the direct direct harassment or threats and intimidation because they, they know I wear a, a digital tape recorder and have a video camera. 
Alright, I gotta go. Today's date is April 29, 2012. They're threatening to come and steal my stuff here at this hiking area here. And I'm being electronically harassed here as well.